Hello everyone, it's Mary. Welcome back to the channel. Today I am hoping that this video is chock full of tips. Some probably you have seen before, hopefully some new ones, because I got into the craft room and I got to play with some alcohol inks. And then as I was going through the process, I realized all these additional things that I've picked up over the years that I thought could be helpful, so I wanted to share them. So I'm just showing you a quick snippet of some of the cards that we are gonna make today. And we're gonna start off by pulling out the brand new Barely Art blendable alcohol inks. So Barely Art did send me these inks. Quite honestly, I had no idea they did anything but glue <laughs> because I am a huge fan of the glue, have been for like two years. But apparently they do uh, alcohol inks and there's a couple different theme of colors out there that you can check out and all that will be linked below if you want to check it out. But um, they sent these to me and I wanted to give them a try, play play with them a little bit. And I thought, what does blendable mean? Because I, I always thought alcohol inks kind of went together, right? So you'll see as we go through the process if they are more blendable in your opinion than others. But I think they work fantastic. So the first piece of paper I'm going to pull out is from Brea Reese. This is a synthetic type of paper. So it is non-porous. It's very thin but it's really great to practice um, your coloring. I'm gonna give you a better tip in a little bit about how to save money though on your paper for alcohol inks. But we're gonna use this because I have it in my stash and I am just going to kind of do some swatching. I'm just dropping all of the colors down here and you can see with this non-porous paper that the alcohol inks are spreading. Really, when you're doing any non-porous non surface, you're gonna be able to see the alcohols inks move a lot better because they're not soaking into say cardstock and so that's really the difference here if you've never played with alcohol inks you have to have the right paper so I'm swatching out like I said and you can see them just kind of going into each other I'm they also come with a brown a black and I noticed the black didn't move that was the black I just dropped so I add a little bit of white to it just to kind of see if those two would blend together and it does move it around so the black does move on your paper it just doesn't move on its own so I'm going to take some of the blending solution and I'm going to drop it right in between the colors because I want to see this blending action going on. And I thought it was really cool. I thought they did blend. They blended very nicely. And so um, I'm going to leave that, put that off to the side, and I am going to actually use that for a card. I originally was just swatching this, but then, you know, as things dry, you get inspired. So that's what we have so far. The next thing, this is the, really the first big tip I want to tell you for using alcohol inks. Get some poster board. This is from the Dollar Tree. You can pick it up at any place that sells school supplies. Um, Amazon, I'll link uh, below on Amazon where I get it in a pack of 25 if they still have it. But it is phenomenal and it is a fraction of the price. We're talking, you know, five by seven sheet of synthetic paper could run you a dollar a sheet, five by seven size, where this, I think I, I did a whole video on this, but it was like 10 cents comparison, 10 cents to a dollar. So it was really, really worth it. Now I'm just going crazy and I'm just dropping a whole bunch of stuff on this. And I just wanted to see how these, this was blending together. I went crazy. Like I said, it was too much. I just added too much and the blue was taking over, but I just kept going with it and just playing because, you know, I wanted to see if there was something more I can get. I pulled out my blower tool here and I use two different blower tools for my projects here, so I'll talk about those. But that one's from Ranger, and I just put that aside because I thought it was, a, it was just a little bit too much. However, when it dried, it was the perfect opportunity for a galaxy. So now I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna do this swatching again because I thought maybe we can get something uh, usable because I didn't plan on using that first swatch and I'm just going to do a rainbow of colors. I love that this color set comes with sort of a teal as well. So it's not just green to blue. You do kind of get a nice mixed color as well. And then I'm just going to drop some blending solution right on the top of it and I'm going to let it fall down. Um, I would have stopped right there and pulled back up the paper and then let it dry. But I think because it moves on its own so much, it would have thickened out regardless. So we're gonna put that aside to let it dry. Now we're gonna have a little bit of fun with a hair drying tool. <laughs> so this is tool I'm gonna pull out is from Revlon. And what I really love about it, so if you watch some of the 
actual alcohol ink experts on YouTube, they use this. And I can see why, because what I love about it is you have high and low in heat setting, and then you have a cool high setting. And I switch, right now I'm doing the high heat, and I switch to the, the cool heat setting, or excuse me, the cool setting. And it didn't dry up my alcohol ink so much. And so I can move my stuff around without it drying from the heat of the tool. So I love that. I thought that was so cool. And I love the look it gives. It gives a different look than the blower tool. And so I thought that was a lot of fun. We're going to put that one um, into a full card here. I'm going to show you what I did with that one. I added some foiling and uh, a sentiment here and I'm going to talk to you about that sentiment tip in just a second because I felt like my black on the background was getting lost and so I'm going to show you well I could just tell you I just put some white dots on it that's it right I'm going to show you up close in a minute let's move on to the next one I um, did the same technique so I dropped in blending solution a dot of white and then a dot of the pink, and I'm using the teal color. Watch just with these two colors, the mix that you get between the two. So this is the pink um, and the teal. And those are probably my two favorite colors to use with alcohol inks. I just think they're so fun. And then I'm going back in with some white to kind of get those to move around a little bit more. And they are, I just I love the wispiness of the tool that you get uh, with that. Now, I want to go back here. Right here, I actually did not have any dry pieces, but on this one, I did. No, excuse me, tacky, right? So it was tacky, so it wasn't fully dried. That's what I meant. And when you have that, pull out some foil. This is from Deco. This is Deco foil, I think. And I'm just placing that right on top, and you're going to get beautiful accent embellished pieces on your alcohol projects, but you can't let it dry fully if you want that look. So I did that on the other cardstock with some tacky glue. So I'll link below two glue options that dry tacky. You can just put a little glue on there, and then this is what I'm doing here. And then I'm picking it up with some foil, and I'm going to have that left behind. But that was from using tacky glue. Mono adhesive is one of them. Scrapbook.com smart glue is another. And it's such a fun technique because you can place that down. I just use my finger. Those are my permanent fingerprints basically on this card because I use the glue and my finger to kind of move it around. But you get such a nice little accent to it. So I really love that technique. And that's another tip for this is, you know, if you put your stuff aside and you let it dry, you forgot about it and you're like, oh, I missed my opportunity. No, you didn't. Just pull out some tacky glue or even double-sided adhesive if you want, like straight on strips, like anything that's going to be sticky that you can pick up foil. So that is another tip that I want you to consider. Now here are some of my finished backgrounds. They're all dry. Some are poster board, some are synthetic paper from Bray Reese, but I'm going to make something out of this rainbow piece because I just thought it was so pretty. So I did not want to throw that away. Although it was meant to be a swatching sheet, I'm going to use it. So all I did was went and cut it out. That's it. I threw away the rest, and now I'm going to make a slimline card. So slimlines are eight and a half by three and a half, and so I need a card panel for that. So I cut that down to size, and then I am going to place it there. So I had a hard time. Honestly, this is like off the camera. You don't see part. I had a hard time figuring out how I wanted to finish off this card. But finally, I picked some stuff out of my stash. That's how I store some of my stash items on the right there. I have this 16 drawer set that is my most favorite organizational tool in my craft room. And I just pulled out one of my drawers, had a bunch of sentiments, and I had a bunch of like leftover pieces. So, you know, try not to throw away if I can help it. So now I'm going to place this at the top. And um, at first, I thought this was going to be uh, with the rainbow coming down. But then I just turned it around because, again, I played with this off screen quite a bit. And I like it better this way. Now, this is one of my favorite tips and tricks to share with you for embellishing. This is Dollar Tree Glitter Nail Polish that I put on a little makeup sponge, which will soak up some of the wet, and then you'll get just the glitter on your card surface. You can fancy up anything you want by doing this technique. I'm only going to the right side of my card right now because I really just, that's what I was being called to do <laughs> for my project. 
but you can put it anywhere you want to. All right, so then I'm gonna pop this up on some foam tape. Now, this is a super fun sentiment, I believe from Tailored Expressions, and it was so fun to color up. I used alcohol ink, or alcohol marker, excuse me, to color that up, and I'm just going to place it. I thought it was such a nice, almost like the rainbow is coming up out of the rainbow. Um, and so I just really thought that was fun. I'm gonna use a glitter pen. This one's from scrapbook.com and I'm just going to add that to the word friend. Now, because I used alcohol markers on my friend word, they're not reacting to the glitter pen. If I was to use like a, a water brush pen or something like that, you have to be extra careful. And that will finish off that card right there. So I'm loving so far, just having a great time with these alcohol inks. I don't pull them out very often, but when I do, I am never disappointed. It is always so much fun. So what it really, I have to say, I love these. I think these are super vibrant, probably one of the most vibrant of the alcohol inks I've played with. But, um, you know, so far I think that most of them are pretty comparable. So, you know, if you have them in your stash, pull them out. Let's just have some fun, right? If you uh, are interested in checking out these, they will be linked below. Okay, now I'm going to show you, I just showed you real quick, I'm using Dr. Martin's No Bleed white paint. Now, I did a video, <laughs> shocker, in compares, uh, comparing white paints or white splatters that stay white and this was the all-time winner. So um, if you wanna check out that video, that's on my channel as well, but it really does. So doesn't this background look like a galaxy? Like, wait till you see, okay, so we're putting the stars on, and I'm thinking I'm using a small enough brush to get really tiny splatters, but I'm about to show you a, a tip to really make your constellation <laughs> look realistic. Okay, so I'm going through, you can use, you can flick that off of a, a brush, you can do all kinds of things, but I'm gonna take my paintbrush and I'm gonna use my thumb. And you see those splatters, those those chunky kind of together splatters that I'm getting? You're not gonna get that from a paintbrush. You, This toothbrush technique works the best for that. And I just think it looks so fun and it really does look very realistic. So here we have our galaxy background. You know, you can't turn away from an opportunity for a galaxy background, that's super fun. Now let's get into some sentiments here. The next thing I'm going to do is pull out these sentiments. These are from scrapbook.com. They're brand new. I love them. They're super encouraging. Um, they are a lot of fun and I don't have any other words like that. So that's awesome. Now I can see I'm getting kind of lost with my black sentiments on my cardstock. So I could have done them in a different color, but the white embossing on black cardstock is always my favorite. This is a what not to do. Let me pause. Don't do this. So I took the black and I tried to like outline it with a white marker and it came out looks like hot garbage. So I'm going to show you a better technique or if you have a steadier hand, that's fine, but I do not. I am just going to dot. When you dot stuff, it's very forgiving. No one's looking at your dots to see if they're perfectly symmetrical. I'm using an Arteza white gel pen, one of my favorites, and this is a 0.8 uh, medium uh, or a 0.8 tip. And I'm just gonna dot them. And I think it adds something super fun to your sentiments. And it is um, easy to do. And it, like I said, it's very forgiving. All right, so I'm just decorating up. Um, I actually did not add additional embellishments. I kept these couple panels here super simple with just the sentiment. And I think, of course, this is where the creative part is so much fun because if I leave this and then I pick it up later and I want to add some diamonds or some sequins or something like that, then I, I feel encouraged to do so and I don't have to complete everything right now. I am pulling out this uh, thankful set from scrapbook.com or this is high fall actually. Look at how chunky that high is. That's super fun. But it also comes with lots of different fonts. So the great thing about the clear stamps is you can kind of do what I'm doing and just kind of see how this might look on your project. And so I um, am doing that right now. I'm kind of seeing how do I want to finish out this card because I do not want to cover up that center piece, which is really the art piece for giving out this card. So I am going to decide that I want to heat emboss the words thankful and uh, what's the other word? Wonderful. And I'm going to tell you, this is another tip. Um, 
condition your stamps when they're brand new. You want to rub your finger over it to get some of that residue, or you can use an eraser, but you just want to because the manufacturer sometimes it's powdery or there's something on it. And so that's a really great tip to get a nice crisp image. Next tip for heat embossing is um, use an anti-static powder tool. That's going to keep that really fine embossing powder where it's supposed to be as best it can. Another tip, I have a little binder clip to hold my embossing bag because that keeps my hands kind of off of it and it's easier to maneuver. And so that was something that a, a viewer shared with me and I love that tip. That's like one of the greatest. And so now I'm going to use some sticky clear ink and we are going to stamp this on to our wonderful and thankful stamps. And I like to double stamp. So yet another tip, double stamp with your sticky ink. That's why a stamping positioner is really helpful in this regard because I want to get a really crisp image, especially because this font is kind of thin and cursive, and so it's not as easy. I can already tell you that one, that first stamp was not good enough. So now I have the second stamp. I'm going to be using some really extra fine embossing uh, powder. And I am going to, at this point, I have my heat gun already warming up. So that's definitely an additional tip. Keep your heat gun warming up. It makes it so that your cards don't warp. I pulled out a little silicone mat here. I could have heat this on my, uh, heated it on my glass mat, but then I, sometimes that's too hot of a surface for me. So I just pulled this little pad out. And I'm going to heat set it real quick. All done. I'm using the Wagner heat tool for that one on setting two. That's really the only one I use and it gets it done quick. Now I am going to share with you one of my favorite things to do. I have labeled this called bubble cutting. I love doing it because, especially with curvy fonts, because it's super forgiving and it adds such a nice touch instead of just a, a regular rectangle or square shape. And so I bubble cut my stuff. I'm going to put my tweezers to hold it and then some um, Barely Art glue here. And I can't say enough good things about this Barely Art glue. It's my absolute favorite and the um, little nozzle that you can buy it and it lasts forever. I actually had to throw away the bottle. <laughs> with it probably had I don't even know a little bit enough it had enough left in it I emptied that into a different container and I had to throw away the bottle because I had the bottle two years it just got too junked up I was ready to go and so um, I kept the glue ditched the bottle but it lasts so long because of that thin nozzle and I'm just going to place this this I was using Brea Reese for this so it's very thin so I wanted to place it onto a stronger more sturdy cardstock so I did that and then I'm going to trim that down so now I have my eight, my slimline size and that will finish off this card as well. And I remember the embellishments here, you can add them, you can keep it as is. I have the foil accent on there so I think it's really nice the way that it is. But always keep that you know, creative side in your back pocket and do what you want and that's what the greatest part about this whole process is. And so now I'm going to show you a few of those finished cards here in the backgrounds, but we still have one more super fun one to get to. And that is how we're going to finish off the galaxy background. I'm going to be honest with you because we're all friends here. I had a very hard time <laughs> figuring out what I was going to do with this galaxy background. Um, so I sat with it, I actually walked away and went to play ping pong with the kids. And then I came back and I was like, okay, I think I got it. So I went into my stash and I pulled out this uh, cute little uh, critter that I had. He was an alien, which was perfect. And I found this sentiment. It said, love you to the moon. I could have created new sentiments and colored up new things, but I was just in lazy status when I was doing this and I just wanted to grab what I had. So I took out some cardstock that was on the gray tone and I just used my um, foam tape roller, roller or roll rather, um, to cut this little circle out here. I placed it up against my card panel which I had cut down to an A2 size and I just wanted to see how much of the moon I would get. Now I could have made this moon way more realistic, added some craters, all of that, but it's not water watercolor cardstock and I didn't want to screw it up so I was like, eh, let me just make the moon. Everybody's going to know what it is because it's in the sentiment. So I just cut that down and then I did take some distress uh, distress ink to kind of flick onto the edges of it. So first in the pumice stone and then in the black soot. 
And it really does give quite a bit of dimension, just something additional to what you're doing here. So instead of leaving it just flat, that is something that really I want to encourage you to try is to just add a little bit of that dimension on there. Don't overthink it. It's just to add um, something for the eye. I'm going to place that down with some glue and then I'm going to place down my Love You to the Moon as well and I'm going to place both of those flat. So now we see that this is the moon out in the galaxy and our little alien who looks super thrilled. <laughs> we're going to make it more exciting. So I'm going to add this little action wobbler because I haven't used these in a very long time. And so now I'm just going to place him right on top of the moon. And you know, when you are out on the moon, your gravity is, you know, kind of dispersed quite a bit, right? So he looks like he's jumping up and down. He's a little wobbler. And there we go. And that's so fun. <laughs> So that'll do it for all the cards. I hope that this video was helpful for you. I hope you got to walk away with a few new tips. And uh, I would love for you in the comment section to share with me what are some of your tips that you thought of while you were watching the video that you could share um, in maybe ways of fixing problems or anything that you kind of use when you're using alcohol inks or heat embossing or just anything because I love to learn. So I will see you all in the comments down below and in the next video. Bye-bye.